I thought it would be interesting to take a look at Linux Mint versus Windows 11 in terms of install requirements, the install itself, and just kind of see which one runs lighter after the install. And just to clarify, I myself did not do any research here, so I'm gonna be discovering these answers as I go along with you guys. I turned off my face cam for this bit so that you guys can see both browser windows clearly. So on the left is the Windows 11 minimum system requirements, and on the right is the Linux Mint minimum system requirements. And I wanna specify minimum, because that's what we're looking at here. We wanna compare minimum to minimum, even though the Linux side shows the recommended system requirements as well. So just going down the list here, so processor on the Windows side, it shows you need a one gigahertz or faster processor. And on the Linux side here, it does not specify. So we're going to assume it's basically the same requirement here as with Windows. For RAM, Windows 11 requires four gigabytes and Linux Mint requires two gigabytes for the minimum level. For storage, Windows 11 requires 64 gigabytes or larger and Linux Mint requires 20 gigabytes or more. And this is where things differ quite a bit. So Windows 11 requires you have UEFI and be able to uh, use Secure Boot. And it also requires that you have the TPM module on your motherboard and you need to be able to enable the TPM. And Linux Mint does not require these things. Windows requires a high definition 720p display, so 1280 by 720 and Linux Mint requires a 1024 by 768 resolution display. And one more thing here that Windows 11 requires that Linux Mint does not, it requires you to be connected to the internet for the install and to have a Microsoft account. Linux Mint does not require any sort of centralized account or internet connection. So one more thing I wanna call attention to here, Windows 11 Home, which is the version most people would use, is $139 per license and Linux Mint is free to use. It's even free to use for commercial use, which is actually pretty significant because usually like with Windows 11, there's a pro license and the pro license costs more. It costs $200. Linux Mint can be used for commercial purposes for free. And you can even sell Linux Mint without permission. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through each install very quickly. This is not necessarily a guide. So if you wanna watch a guide video, I have guides on each install, both for Windows 11 and Linux Mint. So if you wanna watch that, go ahead and find those videos and watch them. But I'm gonna go ahead and go through these installs very quickly. And then at the end, we're gonna see the difference in numbers of steps for each install. Okay, so for a pre-install setup on the Windows 11 side, you gotta go into your BIOS. This is my BIOS menu. Go into your advanced settings here. Go into motherboard settings. For me, it's motherboard settings. For you, it might be something different. And then in terms of security here, we have to make sure trusted computing, just make sure that our TPM device 2.0 is selected and enabled. If there's a separate option to make sure your security device is enabled, enable that as well. So that is one thing. And then another settings, security, secure boot and just make sure that secure boot is enabled so those are two steps here on the windows 11 side that you have to do in order to install windows 11. okay so now that we have our bios settings set for windows 11 install we're going to open our browser we search windows 11 download just that first link here download windows 11 and this right here create windows 11 installation media we click download now so we have that media creation tool downloaded. We just need to take our flash drive and plug it in. And we're making sure that it's a flash drive that we don't mind losing everything on because everything will be erased by this process. So we just right click, run as administrator. We accept the license terms. We leave the recommended settings here and click next. We are setting up a flash drive. So we leave this selected and click next. We click our flash drive here and we click next and we wait for the download and setup of the ISO. Okay, the flash drive is ready. So you just click finish. And so here's where if I was setting this up on my physical machine, I would restart my computer. I would be slamming my boot menu key to pull up my boot menu. I would select my flash drive that I need to use for the Windows 11 install and hit enter. And then it would boot into the Windows 11 installer. But I'm gonna be doing my setup on a virtual machine. I just felt that it was important to show these flash drive setup processes because they are different between Windows 11 and Linux Mint. And since I mentioned that I'm gonna be doing this on a virtual machine, I just wanna explain what virtual machines are from a high level. So with virtual machines, just imagine that you have a pie and you cut out a slice of the pie. So that's essentially what you're doing with a virtual machine. You have your physical computer and all of your physical components, such as your RAM, your processor, your hard drive, even your graphics card, and you're sectioning off part of those resources to be used by the virtual machine. So you have your physical computer, 
and you section off a little bit of RAM, a little bit of processor power, a little bit of storage space, and a little bit of your graphics card, and you use that to create another computer inside of your computer, a virtual computer or a virtual machine. Okay, so here we are in the installer. So we just click next here for our language. We keep this keyboard setting and click next. We are installing Windows 11, so we leave this. We click agree to the settings and click next. We're not using a product key, so we click I don't have a product key. We're doing Windows 11 home, so we click next. We accept the license term here. We create a partition, click apply, select the big one of the two and click next. We're ready to install, so we click install. Now we wait for the install. Okay, the install is done and we are at the setup screen now, so we'll go through this. So leave our region as United States and click yes. We leave our US keyboard layout and click yes. We are not gonna add a second layout, so click skip. And we're trying to avoid that internet connection requirement, so we're gonna go ahead and hit our shift F10 to open the command prompt. And we type in the command start ms hyphen cxh colon local only. We set up our user account and password and answer the security questions and hit next. And we just wait for the last setup here. Okay, and we switch off all of the uh, privacy settings here and click accept. And that's it for the install steps. Now we're gonna update Windows, make sure it's fully up to date, and then we will check the resource usage. Okay, I have ran all of the Windows updates and Windows is now up to date. So before I show the resource usage while each system is idling, I just wanna clarify that I gave them both the exact same settings. So each one has exactly eight gigabytes of RAM. Each one has four cores available to it of the CPU. And each one was given 64 gigabytes of storage space. Okay, so we're just gonna right click on the task bar, go to task manager, and we just click on performance. And I'm just gonna let it set for a few seconds to make sure that any spikes in performance from opening up task manager go away. Okay, and after a clean install of Windows 11, our CPU usage is hovering around 2%. Our memory, our RAM, is running at 2.4 out of 7.9 gigabytes. And then if we just open up a file explorer and we look at our disk drive, so a little bit gets used by the system, right? So it's not fully the 64 gigs, but out of 63 gigs, we have 42.4 free. I pulled up the calculator so you guys can see exactly. So 63.2 gigabytes overall storage space. If we subtract the 42.4 gigabytes free, we get 20.8 gigabytes taken up by the Windows 11 install. So for our Linux Mint install, you would need to first download and install a torrent application if you don't have one already. So we open our browser. An open source one is Qubit Torrent. So we search Qubit Torrent. It's the first one in the list, Qubit Torrent. We go to download, click download Qubit Torrent version 5.1.2. We just click on the 5.1.2 here. And we click the first one, the setup.exe. Okay, so in your downloads, you would right click and run as administrator. Leave it on English and click okay. Click next, click next. I like to deselect create desktop shortcut and also I like to limit the applications that start on Windows startup. So I deselect those, but otherwise click next, click install and just wait for the install. And then we can launch BitTorrent. So click finish. Okay, so we have our torrent program ready. So now we should open our browser again and just search for Linux Mint. It's this first link here, go to download. We're getting Cinnamon Edition, click download. And it's this torrent download link here. Click that 64 bit. Back in Qubit Torrents, so we go file, add torrent file. Got to downloads, it's that first one there, Linux Mint, Cinnamon, and open it up. We don't need to change any settings here, just leave this all default and click OK. And we just wait for our download. All right, download is complete, so we can close Qubit Torrent, and you'll see your Linux Mint ISO in your downloads folder. So now we need our program to flash the ISO onto our flash drive, so go ahead and open your browser again. Search for Rufus, first one here, Rufus. You scroll down a bit, and that first download right there, click on this Rufus 4.9.exe. All right, so that's downloaded. Now we need our flash drive. Make sure it's a flash drive that you don't have anything that you need on it because everything is going to get deleted by this process. Flash drive is plugged in, so we right click on Rufus, run as administrator. Okay, so just make sure the correct flash drive is selected here, then click select to find your ISO. It should be in your downloads. So right there, Linux Mint, click that and click open. We just leave all of the default settings here and then click start. We want the recommended setting here, so click OK. It's just asking to download additional files needed, so just click yes. And then it warns you that everything's gonna be deleted, so click OK, you know that everything is gonna be deleted. And then we just wait. Okay, flash drive is ready. We're gonna do the same thing as with Windows 11, right? So we're not installing this on our physical machine. 
We're just going through the process of what would have been done on the physical machine. So we are gonna do this in a VM from here on out. Okay, so we have booted into the Linux Mint live environment. So this is kind of an environment where you can mess around and test things out. But to install Linux Mint, we double click on install Linux Mint right here. Okay, we want English, so we click continue. We leave these defaults and click continue. We don't need to mess with this, so we click continue. We leave this here on erase disk and install Linux Mint, and we click install now. Just verifying our settings here, so we click continue. You select your time zone and click continue. You fill in your settings here, your name, your computer name, your user account and password, and click continue. And we just wait for the install. The install is done, so we click restart now. We have to remove our installation media. So physical installation, you would be removing a flash drive, but I just remove it in my settings. Once removed, we hit enter. Okay, so we're inside our Linux Mint installation and we're just gonna run all of our updates now. Okay, so our updates are done. So we can close this and go into our all applications here. Go down to system monitor. We'll open this up. We're on our resources tab here. We'll let it equalize for a second. Okay, and if we watch the cores here, we're averaging around 8% usage on the CPU. And for memory, we are using 1.2 gigabytes out of 8.2. If we go down here and click on our files, and then just hover over file system here, or it'll say at the bottom as well, we have free space of 51.7 gigabytes. I opened up calculator here, and if we subtract our 51.7 gigabytes of free storage from our 64 total, we get 12.3 gigabytes that Linux Mint is actually using up on the storage. So what did we actually find throughout this process? Well, we found that Linux Mint is actually lighter on system requirements than Windows 11. We found that Linux Mint is free to use even for commercial use compared to Windows 11 Home being $140 or Professional being $200. After going through each install, the number of steps for Windows 11 is 27, and the number of steps for Linux Mint install is 43. That's actually quite surprising to me because I, in my head, felt like the Linux Mint install was actually simpler in a way, but for the Windows install, it's actually less steps. I, I don't know why I thought that it was gonna be more. And for resource usage by each system, the Windows 11 install uses less CPU resources, but more RAM, and then the opposite is true for Linux Mint. It uses more CPU, but a lot less RAM. And in terms of hard drive space, Linux Mint definitely comes out on top in terms of the install size. So what did you guys think about the findings in this video? Let me know what you think. Let me know what you thought was gonna happen. Let me know how you feel about each operating system or if there's another operating system that you wish had been compared. I'd love to hear all of you guys' feedback. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.